Howdy folks, it's Monday and we have a new machine to show you and I can't show it to you because we have to wait for the marketing company to figure out whether I can go ahead and release the video or not. So in the meantime, uh, rather than wait on them, <laughs> we'll just go ahead. I want to show you some of the do-it-yourself projects that I've been working on around the place and also some products and things that have been coming in and uh, just talk about all of that crazy stuff. So I think what we'll start with is the deal on the, I swapped out a set of French doors and saved thousands of dollars. Let's take a look at that first. Sometimes we get a lot of other projects going on that I don't get a chance to film. Because a lot of times we're like reviewing a tool or something that week and I'm working on research and features and trying to make sure that you guys understand, you know, what what that tool is about. But I also have a lot of projects going on around the house all the time. And this one just went off this last couple of weeks. And again, I couldn't film it because I was quite busy with tool reviews and could not get into filming this. So it's kind of like down the road, it's almost completed, but I wanted to show you what we were working on. And I saved thousands of dollars. Uh, this is an old uh, French door set that was at the back of my house. And the tractor picked up a stone, hit the glass, the glass was $1,000 to replace because it has the mini blind and everything else kit in it. So, also there was a problem with the doors themselves. They're uh, 31 inch or something with a 62 inch uh, set of doors plus a total 64 inch opening. And if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's right now and tell them you got a 64 inch opening, uh, they'll tell you, oh, that's custom. And uh, the prices ran around $3,500 to $4,000 for a set of French doors. It was a, oh, oh my God. But if you go with a common size, 72 by 80, it's what, 678 or something, list price in Home Depot right now. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and bought the common size. Now the contractors took a look at the situation and just said, oh, you know, impossible. You'd have to, you know, cut the whole side of the wall open and move everything. And I'm a do-it-yourselfer, so I did it. But I saved thousands of dollars. Well, I'll show you where I'm at with the new French door set. It's a different style, which the wife wanted. You know, she didn't like the blinds, and I don't like the blinds either. But we went with another set, uh, style that she did like, and it was like say 6.78 at Home Depot. So all I had to do was, uh, so all I had to do was cut the drywall from the inside. Uh, from the outside, I cut away at the outsiding, the siding itself, so that I could move the two by fours that are in the wall. You know, recut the plate on the, the floor, also change the header length, which was, all, that's a lot of work, but I was able to do it without disturbing the house and without busting drywall or something. So uh, I'm gonna show you from the outside what the project looks like because I'm just finishing closing it from the outside. I've got the inside is, is completed at this point, but the outside is got a little bit more to do. And I'm working on that as a matter of fact today between takes with doing tool reviews. I'm also going to show you another project that I did the last few weeks. Again, didn't have time to film it, but I think I'll show you the, the finished product. Anyways, it came out nice. Well, let's take a look at the French doors. And pow, here's the new French door set. This set here is a common size, so you save a huge amount of money if you just buy a common size. The problem is the studs in the wall, the header, everything was sized for that other door set. So we had to put, we had to run new header and we moved, we cut the studs and actually were able to cut back into the, the uh, wall and move everything back. So we basically reframed at this point, but from the outside, from the inside, we only trimmed it, like I said, just cut the drywall only and nothing else was cut uh, at that point from the inside. So the project went off, it went off really well. And it is one of those almost, you know, mission impossible, but we managed to do it. Uh, another project that was also working on, uh, the wife found one of those nasty old rusty benches. The wood was all gray. It was really nasty looking. And I refurbished it uh, in the last few weeks, uh, again, off the show. And I had to, uh, I really wanted to film it, but I, I really didn't have the time to get into it because we are busy with tool reviews and what have you. So I'll show you the finished bench anyways. I think it came out really nice. Not exactly it's perfect home, but this was all rusted and the wood was all gray and nasty. It was actually at a uh, yard sale and had been sitting there all day for $20 and nobody would even look at it. It was so rough looking and uh, refurbished and uh, did uh, took the uh, wood and ran it through the uh, planer just a little bit just to take off the gray. 
uh, did some hand sanding and stuff on it, restained it, also repainted this whole back, all the iron. Had to be wire brushed, of course, first, and then uh, painted with a rust, you know, rust paint. But uh, I think the results, uh, you know, new hardware, uh, new, all new bolts and screws, of course, you know, you had to do that. So we got a little bit of money in it, I guess. But the, the thing was, when it's finished, it's a beautiful bench and, uh, you know, I love it. I haven't got a spot in the yard for it yet. I'm just sitting in here because this way it's out of the way right now. <laughs> But, but yeah, that's another project that just, we didn't have a chance to film it. Howdy folks, this is a project that I've got going on. Got this table a few weeks ago, and it's just an outdoor table, and it was in kind of rough condition. You can see the, all the gray wood, it looked pretty bad, but it's on an anodized aluminum frame, which will last virtually a very long time, last forever in my case. But the gray top will look really bad. So I'm doing an 80 grit sand, and just sanding the whole thing down, top, sides, what have you. And then we're just going to put like a, a seal on it. I thought it would be a good idea to show you the project a little bit as to what's going on and what's looking like while I progress a little bit here and get this done. This is one of those projects, generally, we've done things like this in the past. I just don't get a chance to film them. And this sort of thing's going on every week. Like I said, this, this week alone, I probably have, I guess, four or five of these projects like this going on. And we just don't get a chance to film them for the show. We're, we're doing tool reviews and whatever, but I thought I'd throw this at you, just show you what's going on. No price. Yeah, this was free from an estate clearing out that was just like a moving sale thing. They are just getting rid of stuff. And nobody was interested in this. Of course, with the gray, it looked pretty rough, so I guess everybody just walked away. But I thought, what a great table for, you know, the right place. So it's like, well, I'll take it, and I'll refinish it a little bit, and it'll be beautiful, and it'll be an outdoor table. It's uh, raining today, so I can't get good lighting in here right now, but this is the uh, finish. I stained it with uh, Dutch oil, uh, dark walnut, and just put a finish on it for now. It is an outside piece of furniture. It'll go back to gray at some point, but I thought, oh, for the short duration, you know, make it look good at least for the time being. And the chairs will be the same thing. The chairs are also have that real dark gray right now that's a mess that they'll have to be sanded up. But uh, I thought I would do the table first and see how it came out, and I'm happy with it. Yeah, so that table came out nice. This is another project I started working on <laughs> this week. Besides the solar, yeah, I like to keep busy. Uh, local had their barn torn down and the lumber was all stacked up, kind of nice. And they want to get rid of the barn board. And so the gal contacted me and said, you can have the pile of barn board for free. I'm trying to see if I can find uh, just maybe take some of the barn wood away because not all of it's reusable or recyclable. But uh, I took this piece and a couple of sample pieces off the pile. Just said, well, I'll take these home. I'll run them through the uh, Vivor uh, planer. A uh, link will be provided down below where you can find that planer. <laughs> and ran that through. This stuff starts out kind of looking a little bit gnarly. A lot of nails in it. So you have to take your metal detector and probe to make sure there's nothing left in that lumber before you do it. But then I ran it through the planer and I just took a little bit off and it's not in great condition but I think as a recyclable wood I think we can still get some good lumber out of this. Uh, I need to do a roof over my uh, garden shed at some point and I wanted to do a nice A-frame roof like a 12.5 or something like that and if I do that with, with tin and whatever I just need some kind of wood that'll obviously make up a rigid structure for wood and you don't need fancy wood for that anyway so you know I'm probably gonna end up trying to get as much of that lumber out of there in the next week or so as I can to uh, redo it and it's all old barn board I uh, can't tell you what it is it's obviously it's not pine I think it's Douglas fir but you know uh, sometimes I'm a little off on wood I don't it's not a hard wood you can tell by the grain and whatever it's it is it's a soft nature but it's uh, got a dark chocolatey uh, color to it so yeah, it's like a saddle tan to a dark brown, very dark brown. So maybe somebody will comment down below and tell me what they think it is. The barn was over 80 years old. Yeah, so it was a very old barn when they took it down. And uh, I didn't see the whole structure when they took it down, so I have no idea what size it was. But there was a lot of uh, two by six, two by 10 pieces of lumber, all very rotten. But you know yourself, you cut that stuff down, you could at least get some you know, free two by fours out of it. It's going to be some work because I got to pull all these nails and stuff, and uh, then I got to check everything for metal before I can touch it with, uh, a, you know, a plane or anything like that. This could still be taken down. 
Also, it's oversized uh, dimensionally compared to what we buy in the <clears throat> big box stores these days. Uh, yeah, you know, funny how a two by six is now, uh, what, inch and a half by five and a half? And this stuff is well over, uh, it's, it's over inch and a half thick. It's over, it's over uh, five and a half uh, this way. So, yeah, you know, you could, oh man, you could probably get some good stuff out of it. Just one of those uh, various projects that I want to share with you guys because, like I said, there's a lot of projects that I'm involved with that I'm doing in the middle of taping the show. And a lot of times I think, maybe people think this is all I'm doing. Well, no, I've got a lot of crazy stuff going on all at the same time. <laughs> Boom, yeah, so you get the, uh, you get my drift. There's a lot of different projects that I'm involved with week to week that unfortunately we just don't get to film. And I just wanted to share some of my craziness with you guys. <laughs> Do it yourself, oh yeah. I also tuned up the car, which was an interesting project. It took an hour just to find the motor that's in that car. You know, after you take everything out of the way, oh, there is a motor under here. <laughs> you know? Uh, another project, of course, uh, we, I really want to get back to my solar, but it'll take time and money, so that'll, that'll hold things up. Now, uh, Top Test sent us over another meter. They make a really cool moisture meter, which I uh, probably could use right now. Uh, <laughs> I gave them away. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and they also have a gas leak detector, which, oh, God forbid, I hope I never need that. You know, <laughs> I gave that away, too. <laughs> and... Uh, they sent this over and it's another meter, but it's a different meter again. This one's kind of an unusual one and it's not very expensive. They make some really cool meters and this is the wrong box. So we'll close this back up and we'll open the other box. This is the sound, sound meter. Yeah. So for measuring sound and that can sort of play some interesting games with you in your shop because a lot of times, you know yourself, uh, some of our tools are pretty noisy. And every once in a while you can pull something like this out. It has a little microphone on top. It's kind of cute. It will uh, tell you exactly the dB rating. And if you are aware of the fact that somewhere around 60, 65 dBs is pretty much the threshold on a human ear before the damage occurs. Also, of course, it has to be over extended amount of time. But again, they don't seem to, you know, the science community doesn't seem to have an exact amount of time. They don't say, you know, five minutes or five seconds. Just an extended amount of time is what they like to say. So something like this around the uh, workshop or whatever you're doing, this might be something you might want to safeguard and pull it out when you need it to check something. Uh, also, I'm hoping that we'll uh, have this around for a while because uh, what I want to do is when anytime we're running something here in the show, I've noticed the microphone sometimes picks the sound up really well and makes it sound really loud when actually, I, and I'm telling you guys, like, oh man, this thing's running real quiet. It's because your microphone doesn't make a sound quiet. So something like this might be pretty cool where I could put the meter on it like this and tell you the 3D printer that we've got in, or in this case, uh, just this past week. Last week we did the uh, uh, bandsaw, and the bandsaw is really quiet, real smooth and everything. But I noticed on the microphone, it was like, man, this sounds like I started up a jet engine, you know, I was like, wow. And it's, it's not, it, you know, standing live here with it, it was like, that thing's running really quiet, real smooth. So something like this would probably be handy to show you guys and say, okay, from now on, let's measure the dB, get the exact amount of uh, dB rating as far as the sound goes. And I want to thank uh, Top Test for sending this over to us because it was just something that, you know, out of the blue, they, they make some really cool meters. That moisture meter would be real handy with the barn board right now. So, ugh. Anyway, but the sound meter, again, uh, can be used for a lot of different applications. If you're running your CNC or huh, the uh, planer, and you're not sure about putting uh, some headphones on or something with it, you might want to check it with something like this and say, okay, what's it running at? And find out, oh, it's running 95 dB or something. It's like, yeah, you actually need hearing protection because you're going to be running this for a, you know extended amount of time. So it's, it's a good meter and it's real simple to use. Again, it's one, and this is another thing about Top Test. I like everything they've had in here has been easy to use. You know, you can power it up. You've got a little light behind it. You've got a hold button so you can, you know, hold the reading and stuff. And it's, it's just, you can also set a maximum and minimum on there if you want, but it's a real simple, I'll get that real close there, wow, focus, you know, and uh, it's a real simple meter to use. And it has the DB right there that tells you right now, like even with me talking here right now, uh, we can see that I'm running somewhere around, oh, let's see what we got here, about 70 DB or something, so yeah. And uh, in fact, just talking to it right here, right now, and I'm seeing, you know, 60, 65 dB or so. And you can set this up 
to what you want in order to get that reading. Also has, like I said, a little, uh, see if I can get that little light thing going to come on. There it goes. And it has a backlight if you're in a dark area or something like that. So it has some neat features. Let's see if I can shut that off now. Yep, got it off. Again, real easy to use, but it's a nice thing to have around. So I wanted to show you that. There'll be a link provided below where you can find these. They're they're cheap enough, great price, and, and handy around the shop for if you want to just check something, even your, I don't care if it's your lawnmower, you know, your tractor or something, just, you know, you're like, oh, wow, you know, I'm in danger here and didn't realize it was that loud or that it's too loud for, for my needs. So, great item. Thank you again, Top Test, for sending this over to us. And you just hold the button down a little bit and it shuts off. Yeah, it has a nice little protective cap. So you can keep that in your truck, your pickup, or whatever it is you're using on work sites and stuff even. And you can take this with you. And if, you're, if there's any question about you know something being too loud, you can sit there and uh, run it. I took a DB rating off of, uh, there was a bad tree I had out here and we had to have the, uh, yeah. We had to have it, uh, the stump, and it had the grinder in. And it seemed noisy. I was kind of surprised. I put the meter on it and I read around 95 to 97 dB, which is like, yeah, that's bad, you know. And I spoke with the fellow that was using the machine and said, do you have ear protection? You know, do you have any, you know, earplugs in? Nope, you know, nothing. And I told him, I says, well, you just ran 95 to 97 dB. I, uh, you know, you're a young man. You might become a little deaf when you get older if you don't smarten up, but you need to have some plugs on, you know. You need something because that thing is too loud. <laughs> yeah, like he didn't know. <laughs> I showed him the meter, so yeah. He was kind of like, oh, didn't know. So there you go. Anyways, uh, we're going to finish this because, yeah, this is awful. I actually have to start another show today. So we'll be working, I'm working all day on shows. Uh, but I was really happy today because I wanted to show you guys some of the uh, various projects. Uh, I've got another project this last week that went off. I got a Craftsman uh, workbench. It's an old one. I've got to change the top on it because it's, I tried changing the, flipping the top and it was like, it's it just smells of nasty oils and residues and chemicals. So I was like, I've got to get that out of here. But the rest of the bench I'll keep. So one of those metal Craftsman benches is kind of, kind of cool. And uh, in fact, it's right below the, uh, solar package we were looking at the other day and uh, when I got that it also got of course a toolbox. I think I showed you the six drawer toolbox from Craftsman that we got in and that was a $30 deal from yard sale. I was like whoa you know fantastic and also looked at some stuff this weekend. I didn't really get anything this weekend to talk about and that happens. We had a we had a dry one for change so I was like I didn't find any ooh la la. <laughs> yeah it just didn't happen but uh, also, I've been working on the solar project stuff, and one of the things I've been doing is using this, which was sent in to us by uh, Val Lab, who makes really cool meters. They make multimeters. They make th this is my favorite baby right here, because uh, I can measure the exact load amount that's coming through. Now, I did order uh, a watt meter in that does an hourly, you know, you know, che checks the uh, load and measures the uh, amount of wattage that's used over an amount of time. Unfortunately, it came in from Amazon and right out of the box, yeah, it didn't work. So uh, they're sending me another one. So hopefully we'll get another one in because when we get back to solar, uh, I want to measure uh, load capacities on my 3D printers, on my tool charging station, my camera uh, battery charging station, that kind of thing. And we want to take a look at what we can pick up with solar on a small package deal, maybe the refrigerator because that is probably the most of the time that's probably the biggest power sucker in the house is the refrigerator the uh, the real big one of course is in the summertime <laughs> I'm in southeastern Texas the air conditioning and I'd like to pick that up at some point but we're gonna need a we're gonna need an expensive amount of system uh, spent a lot of money spent to you know cover that sort of thing thank you guys so much for checking in and you know watching coffee and tools and please like share subscribe ring the notice bell we're giving away a Yep. This Thursday, we're giving away the Depths Tech, and it's the cord, new cordless model. We have a link for it now in the description below where you can find this puppy. It's on a great little price right now, and it charges off a USB, and it's it'll hit 30,000 RPM. So it's you know it's one of those nice little rotary tools that it uh, comes in real hand. Sometimes it gets out of us bind on things sometimes. 
and it's, it's new from Depths Tech. And they just finally sent the link over the other day, so we've updated all, all our shows anyways with the updated link for the Depths Tech uh, rotary tool, but thought I need to get into that. Yeah. I've got to go get to the next project. Isn't that awful? In the meantime, i got to get out of here, so uh, over and out.